Hey guys, thanks for tuning in today. So today we're gonna to be focusing on drivetrain. We, uh, in our earlier episodes, we got our motor all built and ready. We've got our drivetrain out, which we pulled out in the last one, um, gutted the whole thing. So what we're gonna focus on today is we're gonna go ahead and get the transmission and transfer case off the old engine, get the old engine on the stand. We're gonna to have to rob a few things off of it and then we'll have it ready to sell. Meantime, we're gonna go ahead and clean up the bell housing on the oh, on the transmission, get ready with our new flywheel clutch and all that, and our adapter plate. We've gotta do a few modifications uh, in that process. And then we're gonna go ahead and work on getting everything married back together as one unit, so we can go ahead and drop that in and start mocking up with our engine mounts and all. So, stay with us. And that, kids, is how you separate a motor and a transmission. So, being that we, we've got a manual on this one, it's not automatic. Normally the automatic, it just, you know, you separate the converter and it comes right out, no problem. But we had a fair bit to go through with the, uh, the disc and all that and into the flywheel itself. So, kind of to be careful, kind of take it easy, coming out, make sure. That's why we dropped it down a little bit so we had a good line and we come right on out so you don't want to pry on the back side of this or the back side of this flywheel um you should just be prying against yourself so but that's it so now we're ready to go ahead and put this on the stand and then we're going to work on getting that transmission ready to mate up to our new motor All right, so a good idea here, especially with this motor swap and they're just cool to have anyways, I would have at least two engine stands, um, not just one. It makes it so much easier when you're doing this. That way, if you gotta move stuff over, you're not fighting an engine that's laying around. And if you look at this inline six, it's not exactly gonna lay very well. You can actually uh, build you like a little pallet out of two by fours or something like that, or some kind of little makeshift stand. Um, it just makes it so much easier and you can always use an extra engine stand for you know, whatever you know, Nobody always borrow it never bring it back kind of thing. So but anywho uh, We had to go and pull our pressure plate and our disc and flywheel and all off because it wouldn't fit in here behind here With the yoke for the engine stand. So that's no big um, Just six bolts for the pressure plate six bolts for the flywheel and you can set it off the side You're not going to reuse that stuff anyway. So but you know if you're selling the motor it's something cool to sell with it You got it all together. So we're going to work on now is we're going to get rid of the old dirty dingo and i have been dying to say this for this whole project ever since i found this thing this is a uh engine lift plate by the company dirty dingo and i saw it and i was like that's an amazing name i have to buy this so i needed an engine lift plate anyways but it actually it's pretty cool because it'll do the ls you can see the six bolts here and it'll also do multiple uh, carbureted mounts too. So it gives you a ton of different options. And it wasn't bad, it was like 50 bucks on Amazon for free shipping, so. Uh, cool little tool to have. I mean, you can find them anywhere, Jake, Summit, all over the place, Amazon, you know, for different varying prices. But this one's pretty well built, heavy stout. It even comes with all the hardware and it's all got a place to store it too, because, you know, that way you don't end up losing it. So we're gonna end up mounting this on our new engine. We're gonna go ahead and get it in the air. We're gonna go ahead and work on getting our uh, new flywheel, our uh, disc, and our pressure plate and all that on and get that ready. And then we'll move on to our next step, so. All right guys, so 
you know, we got our, uh, got our plate here ready. There's eight different bolts for the valley plate. We've got it off right now, and of course we don't have our knock sensors in because you can't put those in until we put the plate in. But you can't have the valley plate in while you're doing this. You probably could if you got some longer bolts, but it's kind of sketchy and I don't really feel like having an engine take a dive on me. So you just take these six uh, socket head bolts and then run them in and then snug them down. You don't have to get crazy torquing them or anything like that. And uh, plenty, of, plenty of support to go ahead and pull the whole motor up. Now, if you notice, we got it in the center right now. Um, and we're probably going to hook it by the center or maybe the front. I'm not sure. Uh, we might be fine in the center. The, um, to keep the motor balanced while we're working with it. Now, when we go to put the transmission and transfer case and all that on, we're probably going to go ahead and move this to the back and then hook it from the back hole because we'll have all that extra weight on the back and then it'll help us kind of balance out. You notice when we pulled this thing out of here, it was really diving out, which kind of worked because I tried to cheat and leave the exhaust on. It didn't work out too well, so that angle kind of helped, but we won't need that going back in. So we're gonna try to hopefully see if that balances it out a little bit. So just a quick little tip there. All right, so we've got our engine hanging uh, with the old Dirty Dingo, and it's a little front heavy right now, but when we put that flywheel and the clutch and everything on there, it's about to balance out, and that stuff is not light at all. So uh, we went ahead and got ARP bolts for our, mounting our flywheels. We went ahead and cleaned out our holes, a little bit of brake clean, and then blew it out to make sure we got a good clean surface in there. Um, you wanna make sure your man mounting plate here is all good and clean, so uh, what we're gonna do is go ahead and put these on, ARP supplies a lubricant that you put kind of underneath the head of the bolt there. Um, and then what you do is you go ahead and put the Loctite uh, 242, which is the blue, on the threads here. We've done that in the other ones. And you go ahead and go ahead and line it up. There's a um, little centering dowel on there, which you can see. We'll go right here. You notice on, on the flywheel that we got, most any flywheel that you probably be using, if, you're, if you've got a manual, We'll have this line, you just line it up there. Um, their spec with ARP with these particular bolts, and your application might vary whether you're automatic or whether you go with different bolts. These are 85 foot pounds, so we're gonna go ahead and hang this flywheel on. We're gonna go ahead and start these bolts, get them on, and then torque them down in a cross pattern to 85, and then we're gonna go ahead and get our, uh, our disc and then our pressure plate on. All right, so got our flywheel hung now. We went around in kind of a star alternating star pattern and torqued down to the 85 foot-pounds that our particular bolt spec for. Like I said, depending on what kit you get, it might be different, so. But that's a good rough idea about what you'll probably be looking at, so. Now you notice we got a little bit of splooge here from that lubricant on the heads. We're gonna come back a little bit of, uh, and wipe these off and then hit it with some brake clean. We're also gonna hit this too because it's got a little bit of an oil coating on it to keep it from rusting up while it's sitting on the shelf. And you don't want that oil on there with your new clutch. It'll end up cooking in and it'll cause all kind of issues, chattering, all that, you name it. So we're going to go ahead and get this cleaned up and get ready to put our friction disc on. And then, uh, or actually, we'll put our uh, pilot bearing in, then our friction disc, then our pressure plate. You'll hear the, the tone change as it seats, and all that is is just a uh, oil impregnated bronze. Uh, you don't need to put any kind of lube or grease or anything on there. Actually, if you do, that could end up getting out on your friction disc and causing all kind of issues. That's why we wiped all this clean. Um, now, you do have some setups where they're actually like a, a pilot bearing instead of a bushing, and what that is is like a little needle roller bearing setup. It was actually like what originally came in the back of the 4.0, but in this application, we've got a bronze bushing, so that's all it is. Uh, you'll feel it, you know, bottom out, and that's it. Just get you a good socket or something right around that size. You can nice, evenly drive it in, and you'll be good to go. Okay, 
So we're ready to go ahead and put our uh, friction disc on. Now you gotta be careful, uh, make sure that you're putting it on the right way. Like if you'll notice, I think it says right here, let me see if I can zoom in for you guys. Right there it says flywheel side. So that means you put this side towards the flywheel. Put it in backwards, you're gonna have a bad day. So normally they come with this kind of tool. If not, you can only buy them from auto parts stores. I've actually got a whole toolbox full of these things because I've done so many clutches over the years. Well worth the time, to, or well worth saving them. But you just stick it through, line it up, and da, 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 da. I say it does. I don't know. I don't know. They gave us the wrong one. Nope. Okay. I'm just an idiot. Okay. So make sure you're good and lined up and then slide it through. And what that does is perfectly center your friction disc when you go on, because when you go to put the transmission on, you're gonna to wanna to make sure this is all good and centered so your input shaft all slides in nice and easy and you're not having to fight it and do a bunch of crazy stuff. All right, so we got our uh, got our flywheel on. Went ahead and got our uh, friction disc centered up and our um, our uh, pilot bushing in there. We put our pressure plate on, and this particular one didn't have any dials. Sometimes you'll have alignment dials, but it's no big. This is a bolt kit that uh, Novak spec'd out for this one. It's got lock washers on it. We went ahead and put a little bit of blue 242 Loctite on there just to make sure. Um, but we're going around, and when you tighten this down. You don't want to, you just want to start one a little bit, come across and keep going that way and bring it down nice and even. Otherwise, you can end up warping this thing pretty easy um, and end up with a mess on your hands. So once you get them all down and snug, and then we're going back and um, the spec on these is right around 22 foot pounds. Your particular application might be a little different. So just double check that, whatever you're working with. But for ours, we're going with 22. 